started, I just wanted to thank, uh, thank <laughs> sorry, thank Jay for organizing these family night presentations each semester. And I also wanted to introduce Priscilla Arcianega. She is one of our senior academic advisors who will be joining us today behind the scenes. Um, and she'll be monitoring the chat if you have questions during the presentation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with preparing your student for enrollment at Cal State San Marcos. Again, like Jay said, my name is Dominica Pearl and I'm the Associate Director of Academic Advising at Cal State San Marcos. I've worked in higher education for about 23 years and at Cal State San Marcos specifically in academic advising for the last 19. Um, I'm a mom of three kids. I have two daughters in high school, a senior I was just talking about, I'm very proud, uh, a senior and a sophomore. Um, and my son began middle school this last academic year. Although my kids aren't college students yet, my oldest daughter is in the process of choosing which university she's going to be attending this fall and is working on her scholarship applications. And I feel the pressure that you must have experienced in the last couple of years, and I'm not at all prepared for her to move out and on without me. So setting all those emotions aside for you tonight, I'd like to share in these presentations um, that I was also a first-generation college student um, way back in the 90s, or like my kids like to say, in the in the 1900s, um, they tell people, my son especially likes to tell people that his mom was born in the 1900s, um, which I think is kind of rude, but that's okay. Um, so I understand the anxiety of what comes with navigating the university for both you and your student, um, especially those who are doing this for the first time. Um, before I review the agenda, I just wanted to let you know that a copy of this presentation will be made available to you. Jay usually sends it out the week after or during this week. Um, it'll include important links like this one right here um, to the Office of Academic Advising. Just about everything that I'm going to cover today, you can find on this website. Okay, so here's our agenda for tonight. Um, I'll start by providing you a little background on Cal State San Marcos, the anatomy of our campus, and how advising works to support your student. And then I'll go over degree requirements, so basically everything your student needs um, to graduate. Uh, and then we'll go over the degree planning tools that your students will use to enroll in their classes or have already used the last couple of semesters and what we use at the university to graduate your students. So I'll show you what they what they use is what we use to graduate them. And then I'll share some of our services, academic resources, um, cover fall enrollment, and then finish with some suggestions on how you can support your students. And at the end of the presentation, Jay, Priscilla and I will be able to answer your questions. So let's start by, um, I like to start with the big picture. So Cal State San Marcos is set up much differently than high school. We're made up of four colleges. This is confusing sometimes to students because they think that Cal State San Marcos is a college, but the colleges are a subset of the larger university. So these four colleges, often referred to by their acronyms, you'll hear these acronyms and it's, it gets very confusing, but once you get the hang of it, um, COBA, KES, CHABS, and CSTEM but they're each a college. So there's business administration, education, health and human services, humanities, arts, behavioral, social sciences, and then science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And you can see why they're, they're a mouthful. So you can see why they have the acronyms. Um, the, the reason why this is important is because each major at Cal State San Marcos fits into one of these colleges. Right now um, we have 37 majors and 51 minors. Um, at the university, that number continues to grow each year. In fact, um, I just wrote down that we will have three, we're introducing three new minors this fall, um, environmental biology, data science, and media studies. So those are two new minors that we'll introduce this fall. Every student must choose a major field of study. So you can see here which college each major is housed in. Um, some students even decide to have two majors, but only one's required. And then a minor is optional and consists of a smaller set of requirements than a, than a major requires. Students can declare up to two minors, but again, a minor is not required. You don't have to have a minor to graduate. It's possible for students to change majors and minors if they find they're interested in a different field of study. So even after this past year, if your student is feeling like they're not loving their major, they can change their major. Um, that's fine. Or they can add a minor, they can move things around however they, they're interested in doing so. Um, However, some majors at Cal State San Marcos are impacted. So that means there's more, there's more students interested in the major than there is room. Um, impacted majors generally have a different set of requirements that need to be met before a student can change into that major. So students wanting to change into an impacted major should meet with an advisor as soon as possible to see if they qualify. Uh, an example of an impacted major at our campus right now is business administration. 
And if a student's interested in um, a student are students are not able to transfer in or change their major to nursing at this point. So you can only be admitted for nursing and that's it. You can't switch into nursing once you've been admitted if you weren't admitted in nursing in the first place. Um, a couple of fun facts about um, changing majors. 30% of undergraduates change their major at least one time. About 10% of college students will change their major more than once. So it's totally normal. This is the time to explore. That's what our general education is for. It's to explore different disciplines and see what students might be interested in. Um, I like to say that I always, I took an archeology span class my senior year in college and I wish I would have taken that when I was supposed to as a freshman or a sophomore because then I probably would have changed my major to anthropology because I loved it so much. Um, and on that note, when I was an undergrad, I changed my major three times, and then I ended up graduating with the major that I originally started with. So I'm, I think I'm a perfect example of a student that changes their mind and then changes it back and so on. Um, there's three different types of advising at Cal State San Marcos. All three advising entities work together to make sure your student's successful. They include faculty advising, our staff academic advising, which is where I work in the Office of Academic Advising, and Priscilla, who's behind the scenes, and then um, specialized advising. So that would include like EOP and CAMP and TRIO, SSS, and programs like that that support specific target specific, specific populations of students. Um, faculty advisors assist students with, their, with career suggestions, um, internship advice, graduate school options, and course approvals. So if your student's interested in um, graduate school or is not really sure what focus they want to do in their specific major, then um, you can encourage them to speak with a faculty advisor. If they have questions about what it takes to graduate, what classes they need to take every semester, then you would want to refer them to the staff academic advisors. Um, Okay, so and then the specialized academic advising are programs, like I said, EOP, CAMP, um, and coaching. That's where Jay comes in. Um, they're counselors or coaches who provide specialized guidance and support to students to empower, encourage, and retain specific populations, such as first-generation students or underserved communities. And then again, um, in academic advising, we advise students from the June after they're admitted until they graduate. So we work with your students specifically on their academic progress, help them with course selection and planning, make sure they're choosing the right classes, and then explain policies and procedures um, as they change or if they don't change and how they apply to the student. If students are part of their specialized program, they're encouraged to also meet with an academic advisor in our office to make sure they're on track to graduate as we're closely involved with the registrar in processing graduations um, students. So we, re we review students' records before um, they're about to graduate to make sure that they're on track. And sometimes we have to go in and like do some course approvals, reach out to the student, make sure that they're enrolled in the right class at the right times. All three of these groups of advisors are here to help your student achieve their academic goals and support them on their journey towards earning a degree. This is a picture of a few of our um, advisors this past weekend at Cougar Blue Day. So they were there um, welcoming new and prospective students and students still deciding on whether or not they want to come to Cal State San Marcos. Okay, so let's talk about what it takes to graduate. Um, there's three components to a degree, which is your general education requirements, your university requirements, and then the major and minor requirements. And again, remember a minor is optional, not required, but a, mi a major is required. General education, or GE, we'll say GE a lot, um, are categories of courses known as areas A through F that students must complete before they graduate from a CSU. Um, if you are interested, and in, once you get this presentation, there is a link here to our GE worksheet, which can be helpful for your students because it lists all of the courses that we have at Cal State San Marcos that count for a specific GE requirement. So it can be helpful to have a, a look at that when they're enrolling in classes. They also will pull up in their degree planner and their academic requirements report. Next are our university requirements. Every student must earn at least 120 units to graduate. Um, sometimes students will finish their major units and their GE units and still need additional units. And that's sometimes when a student would decide to do a minor just to fill those units, or they can just take additional units in classes that might be interesting to them. Um, students must maintain a GPA of 2.0. If they fall below that, then they'll have to bring their GPA up above a 2.0 before they can graduate. And then students are required to complete a diversity and equity requirement, um, which is two courses. And these courses can double count with GE and they're certified by the universities and they will show up in their degree planner as well. 
And then finally, residency means that a minimum of 30 units must be completed at, at CSUSM in order to graduate. And that's just for our transfer students. Um, and then lastly, there's our major and minor requirements. Each major has a specific set of requirements and generally includes between 45 and 70 units. Students are able to view all of these requirements in detail listed out in their academic requirements report, which I'll sometimes call an ARR, degree planner, and then I'll go over those tools in a second. And then in our GE major minor worksheets leaked on this page. So, and I'll show you, I, if we have time at the end, I'll show you where to find those, but the link for the GE worksheets here and the link for the major and minor worksheets are here and you can click on them and it'll list everything. They're a supplemental, um, resource for students, we prefer that they look at their degree planner and their ARR because that's updated each, each, each year. Um, one of the ways you can help your student is by discussing with them their pace to a degree or their unit load each semester. As I mentioned in the last slide, students must complete a minimum of 120 units to, gra 120 units to graduate. That's usually not a problem um, in our high unit majors like CSTEM and um, liberal studies, business administration. But like I said, some majors, students will need to take additional electives to reach that 120 units. Each of these circles represents one unit. So if a student wants to graduate in four years, so four years, um, they would need to average 30 units each academic year. So that's 15 in the fall, 15 in the spring. Or it could be 12 units in the fall, it could be 12 units in the spring, and then a student could take an intercession course or a summer school course. Um, just to make that up, but it's an average of 30 units per year. If a student takes less than 30 units per academic year, they will need additional time to graduate. An example of this would be if a student can only take 12 units because of work or other obligations and is unable to take summer courses, they may opt to graduate in five years, which is okay. Um, discussing unit load is important because one unit of coursework equals an hour of class time and two hours of homework per week. So a three unit course, you can see how that adds up pretty quick. A 15 unit schedule would require 15 hours of class and 30 hours of homework each week. So that's about 40 hours a week, which is more than a full-time job, 45 hours a week. It's important to keep this in mind when students are deciding how many units to take each semester, especially if they plan to work or have extracurriculars or outside commitments. Um, what I, what I did when I was in college, um, I was involved in a couple of campus organizations and also worked about 20 hours a week. So after my first semester doing all of that and taking 15 units, I found myself on academic probation, which did not make my dad happy and was not a good thing. I had to go in at my school. I had to go and sit down and meet with the dean, which was very intimidating. Um, I was just in too much. I wasn't able to manage the amount of work that I had with my extracurriculars, my job and my homework. So I decided to transition to a quality over quantity type method, which meant that I would take 12 units each semester and then take a GE course at a community college close to home over the summer or in, in the winter where I would take two in the summer, just so that I continued to take 12 units each semester and was able to balance my work life um, load much better. And it made my dad happy that I got myself off academic probation and graduated. Um, as I mentioned before, the university has several enrollment tools to help students track their graduation requirements and map out their entire degree plan. So for four years and build a class schedule that works for them each semester. Students have 24 seven access to these enrollment tools. Um, the enrollment tools, tools your student will use are, or if they, and they probably have already learned how to use these, and if not, then um, we have tons of guides online and academic advisors and coaches are able to help students with these tools. Um, we have the academic requirements report, which is the ARR. This tracks all graduation requirements, requirements um, which tells students what classes are in progress, um, met or still needed. So there's green checks, red stops, and then the yellow triangle means it's in progress. That actual ARR is what the university will use to graduate your students. So when your student applies for graduation and that gives us the ping to evaluate their record, they'll go through and just make sure everything's green. And if it's not, then they won't be graduated. And if it is, then they will. So that's why it's important students look at that because we're looking, they're gonna be looking at the same thing that we are um, to graduate them. The degree plan, oh, excuse me, whoa, 
going crazy here. Degree Planner is an interactive online tool students will use every semester to plan their courses for each following term. Um, it will map out the full four years of a student's academic or longer or shorter of the student's academic career. Um, the courses are, um, the co students can choose the courses for each semester. If they plan out too far advanced, some of those courses may not be offered each semester. So we like them to only choose the courses for the upcoming semester. Um, but it gives them an idea of how long it's going to take them to graduate because it, it pulls in everything that they need for their major, minor, and general education and university requirements. Um, and then finally, the schedule assistant is an electronic tool that helps students find classes and build their schedules. So they can put in their breaks, they can put in their work hours, they can put in when they don't want to go to school, if they don't like to wake up early. Um, and then they put in the classes they need, and then the schedule assistant will pop out schedules for them, and then they can pick um, a schedule that works best for them. These tools can all be found in my CSUSM when your student logs into their student center. If your student's unsure where or how to access these tools, they can find guides and videos on our website. Like I said, um, the link is right here on this web, on this side right here. Um, and also on our website, if you click on new student advising, the, the, we keep them up year round. So students can look at the tutorials and, and review them. They can also reach out to coaching or the Office of Academic Advising virtual front desk for assistance from an intake or a peer advisor. Um, our virtual front desk, I'll go over our hours later, but there it's open from eight to five, Monday through Friday, and they can ask questions there and get answers. Okay, next question is usually, when do students pick their classes? And for fall 24, coming up this, this fall, students will begin um, looking at the schedule on April 22nd. The schedule will be available on April 22nd. And, um, they'll also be sent their enrollment appointment that day. So it'll be sent to their email and it can also be viewed in their student center in my CSUSM. Once the schedule is published, students can begin selecting their classes and loading their shopping cart. And then on the day and time of their enrollment appointment, students will be able to enroll in their selected classes. So the fall 24 schedule is published on April 22nd. And, um, and then students will be able to enroll between April 29th and May 10th. Students will be able to self-enroll in up to 16 units beginning that during that time. And then beginning August 8th, students can enroll in up to 19 units. But just remember to encourage them not to overdo it with their units because I, I, I always recommend the quality over quantity method. I'd rather see better grades than take a million classes and graduate faster. Um, students are able to modify their schedules from their enrollment date until the end of the add drop period, which is usually which is the first two weeks of the semester. The fall semester this fall begins on August 26th, so schedule modification can happen up until September 9th. Um, in academic advising, we like to recommend that your students enroll as soon or as close to their enrollment date as possible because classes do fill up quick. And this summer, we have new students coming in who will begin enrolling after this enrollment period. So after May 10th, our new students will start enrolling in whatever classes are left. So you'll wanna encourage your students to try to grab what they can before that, because then things get eaten up pretty quick after new students also start enrolling in classes. The spring 25 class schedule is usually re released mid-November. This, la um, yeah, this last year it was in mid-November. And then the enrollment period is at the end of November, beginning of December. We used to do it over the Thanksgiving break. Students would be enrolling this last year Students didn't enroll until after Thanksgiving break, which I think was made it a little bit less stressful for students. I don't know what we're gonna be doing this year, but just keep an eye on the schedule. Um, the registrar usually releases that um, probably closer to like August, September for the following spring. Not listed on here are the summer and winter sessions. Students are able to enroll in classes in March. So um, students would have already enrolled in summer classes. Summer classes are held June through August, and they can enroll in winter classes in October, and winter classes are held in January. The winter classes at Cal State San Marcos go very fast. Sometimes they're only, I think they're only two weeks, maybe shorter, maybe longer. So we usually only allow students to enroll in one of those courses um, because they do go by pretty fast and they're pretty um, intense. Um, if your student needs help selecting classes or planning their future semesters, they're encouraged to meet with an academic advisor. 
connecting with us is not required, but it's highly recommended that students check in with us at least once a year or more often if they have questions about their requirements, their schedule, policies, um, just so that they stay on track to graduate. Um, the Office of Academic Advising offers several options for students to connect with us. We have eAdvisor, which is a way for a student to submit a question. Um, it's an email. It goes directly to an academic advisor's inbox, and advisors respond within three to five business days. So that if, the, if there's a non-urgent question um, that a student has and doesn't necessarily feel like they need to go in and have a half-hour appointment with an advisor or they don't want to wait for a drop-in, they can send an email and get a response within three to five business days. That response time can take a little bit longer if it's during our drop-in periods, which I'll let you know what that is in a second, um, because we are serving students um, first come first serve as they come in um, during that time. Excuse me. Um, we have our scheduled appointments, which are 30 minutes, one-on-one. -on -one. We offer in-person, phone or virtual through Microsoft Teams. Um, students can schedule these um, same day up to two weeks in advance. So um, students can go onto our website and schedule an appointment with an academic advisor. We have times where our appointments fill up a lot faster than others. So I encourage your student to think about what they want to enroll in maybe a little bit sooner than everybody else so that they can get an idea of, or get a, an appointment a little easier. Because as soon as those enrollment um, dates get closer, our appointments fill up faster. And then another way that you can a student can see an advisor is through drop-in advising. And this is probably our most common way that students come in to see us um, because no appointment is needed. We have these during the enrollment period. So those dates I told you before um, for those two weeks. And then we also have them during the ad drop period. They're 15 minutes, one-on-one -on -one with an academic advisor. No appointment is needed. Um, it's first come first served. Um, we prefer virtual because we can see more students that way. Um, I, some, it just seems somehow that when we see a student online, it's not we, it doesn't take as long as when a student's sitting down in our office. Um, so if, if, if your student's in a hurry, I would recommend that they get on the queue on, through our virtual front desk and then come in and that's how they can see an advisor quicker. And we have more people helping that are virtual as well. More ways to see an advisor is we have group advising, usually by major. Um, we do these before enrollment periods. Um, so you can check our website if we have group advising sessions for a major. This is usually a really good way for students to get just general questions answered so they don't have to wait in line for a drop-in advising appointment or session. We have peer advising. Our peer advisors go to classrooms and do presentations, and they're also um, manning our virtual front and physical front desks. So if your student comes in person to one of our academic advising locations, they'll likely meet one of our peer advisors who are um, trained in assisting students with enrollment and with um, general questions about their enrollment and degree planning. Um, and they're really good about answering questions on our virtual front desk. And then also more about the front desk, we have an in-person and virtual front desk in Microsoft Teams. Um, it's open Monday through Friday, eight to five. Advisors and peers respond to inquiries and general questions. Um, during drop-ins, we usually have a, quite a few people in there trying to answer questions. Um, I always tell um, Priscilla, who is in, Priscilla is the peer advisor coordinator who's monitoring our questions right now. And during drop-ins, I help with the front desk. And I feel like um, if you've ever seen that cat playing the piano, where he's just like like that, that's how it feels like during the, the drop-in periods, because there's just lots of students, lots of questions, and everybody's trying to help as fast as we can. So um, it gets very busy. But we try to help every single student who comes through. Um, besides academic advising, Cal State San Marcos has a number of student academic support services to help students, including learning and tutoring services and personalized academic success services. These include our Academic Success Center. We have supplemental instruction. Um, supplemental instruction is an out-of-class study and review session for difficult courses. I believe the last time I checked that was for like Chem 160, 201, and 202, Econ 202, um, and I think a psych, upper division psych course. Um, we also have a STEM Success Center. They have free walk-in, in-person tutoring for a number of courses in the STEM field. So biology, chemistry, computer science, math, physics, and then our writing center, they offer quick help on channel. They have a quick help channel on Teams. They have one-on-one -on -one appointments, drop-ins. Student can submit their papers to them for feedback. And they offer webinars on how to write academically. 
um, and people can discuss like challenges and what they're looking for. What they don't do is edit papers. So if a student comes in and just hands them a paper, they're not gonna just edit it for them. They wanna talk it through and work on it with the student. Um, we also have personalized academic advising or academic success services. So they do transition counseling, academic coaching, goal development, workshops. We have to change this because we're not supposed to say probation anymore. It's called academic notice. Um, I didn't catch that earlier. Um, and so if your student does happen to find themselves on academic no notice, which is what we used to call probation, um, then they'd want to go in and see a past counselor um, to discuss how to get themselves off academic notice. They can also come in to see academic advising, but PASS has more detailed services to, to help your students be more successful. Sorry, my computer just froze for a second. So we know sending your student off to college represents a major milestone in your lives and is an significant investment in their future. Going off to college is a great opportunity for your student to foster more independence. And we like to encourage students to come in and meet with us on their own. Academic, and this is gonna be hard for me too, as a mom with a student going off to college and because I'm an academic advisor and have been in, in student affairs for so long, like I'm gonna to wanna to be very involved and it's gonna be really hard for me to step back and not be. So I understand this very much. Um, the helicopter, the helicopter parent thing, Jay, for me is, is very real these days. <laughs> So, um, but we want you to know that academic advisors use the time that your student comes in to see us um, as a time to connect with your student and build rapport so that we're able to mentor and support them throughout their academic career. Because remember, we advise them from the minute they're oriented until the moment they're graduated. And, and oftentimes we like to build a relationship with your students so that when they walk across that stage, we, we go to commencement, we get to see them graduate. It's, it's, it's special to us as well. Um, but besides fostering independence, the main reason we encourage your students to advocate for themselves is because as university officials, we're bound by FERPA, which I'm sure you've all heard about already, but it's the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA's um, federal law, so it protects the privacy of student records, um, which means that we have to have written permission from the student in order to release any information from a student's educational record to anyone other than student. So with that said, students are welcome to invite a guest to their appointment when they're meeting with an advisor if they feel like it'd be beneficial, but they must submit a FERPA release authorization in advance of guest attendance. Um, and that FERPA release includes the name and a, of a specific guest. So it would be like the name of the person, their relationship and what that person has permission to view. So it's very, very um, detailed. They can do this in their student center in MyCSUSM. Another option that sometimes um, we, rec we recommend that um, we find a lot more helpful because then the student can ask the questions themselves is um, for you to write your questions down and send them with your student to their appointment so they can ask them, ask us, um, because working one-on-one -on -one with those students helps us stretch, strengthen the advisor-student relationship and, and it boosts their connection to the campus. Um, I, I will have a hard time doing that too. How to support your students. So there's many great ways to foster independence while still supporting your student's success. Ways you can help your student are to guide them and help them. Um, know where to find the enrollment dates. So I just told you what the enrollment dates are for the fall. Um, they are updated on the registrar's website each semester. So these all these links will be available to you. Um, that, so if we can help, you can help your student find the enrollment dates. Um, so often students will come into advising two weeks after their enrollment appointment and not have anything, they haven't enrolled in anything. And, and we get frustrated because they could have gotten into better classes or at better times if they had enrolled sooner. So and encourage your student to check those enrollment dates and know when their enrollment time is. Encourage them to check their degree planner and their ARR often. Again, the ARR is what we use to graduate them. So if there's anything wrong with it, there's a place on our website that they can submit a correction so that we can fix it so that it doesn't happen, like doesn't show up at the very end as a mistake or something that's not going to be cleared for them. Know where to find the dates for drop-in and scheduled advising. Those are also on our website. Help your student keep up with their CSUSM email. This one's an important one um, and something I struggle with my, my students right now, my, my children who are my students also, um, is keeping up with their email um, because important. We send the university will send tons of important emails to you and it's overwhelming because everyone's sending emails to your student. So just have them just keep up with it. Uh, one thing I suggest is trying to have your their school email forwarded to their personal email so that they are getting them more often or in checking them. Um, 
but a lot can be missed if they're not checking their CSUSM email. And then, of course, know and, sh know and share the available support resources that we've shared with you in this presentation. I know I covered a lot of information in a short amount of time, so... Jay, would you like to open it up for questions? How would you like to proceed? Well, thank you so much, Dr. Pearl, Dr. Dominica Pearl. Um, lots of information. So um, let me stop the recording and then we can uh, go into the Q&A portion.